Hello and welcome back to this downfall idealistic crusade. This is a review and a more technical focused review of the two volumes of UHD releases of the classic Universal horror films, or what they typically brand the main Universal Monsters films. These are the big name titles that get all of the usual focus on home video and then all the other universal horror films and the sequels from the 30s and 40s usually kind of get uh, less focus and eventually might get a format release later on. This, of course, happened on VHS, Laserdisc, DVD, Blu-ray as well. So it remains to be seen if we're going to see a third volume of titles getting into the best of the lesser known and lesser discussed films and and there are at least several of those that are just as classic as the main most famous films and deserve the 4K treatment as honestly do all of them. But it seems uh, rather unlikely that uh, Universal is going to eventually do the full uh, entire Universal Horror catalog of classic films as new 4K masters as it took quite a while to even get the main ones. So hopefully we see a third volume with, say, Son of Frankenstein or The Mummy hand among others you know of the of the most famous and most beloved of the later films and those two especially truly deserve and and need the 4k treatment as well now uh, the reason why I say this is more of a technically focused review is that I, I love these films so much and I have so much uh, history with them and they have such a long and storied video history of different presentations and of course before that they had for decades languished in not good states of preservation and had been reprinted and rerun and reissued over and over and over again. So the original elements were, you know, either long gone or destroyed or in very, very poor shape. So they've, they've always been treated differently in different remastering and restoration attempts and different video presentations. So these are some of the famous films that if you're a big fan of them and you look at things like the release and transfer history, you do wind up having to hang on to a variety of older releases specifically for how they handle the audio as well. So uh, that's why I'm going to be focusing mostly on the transfer aspects of each film, which you do need to do quite a bit of digging into. And also because I plan on doing far more videos on the classic Universal horror films anyway, uh, I just wanted to do this video and focus on the 4K presentations and the UHDs themselves. Now these follow suit with how Universal has handled their Hitchcock library in terms of doing these UHD box set volumes where they do four to five films at a time and one of these box sets with the sort of uh, cardboard book type page design and then they bundle it with the pre-existing older blu-rays so unfortunately these are not uh, remastered blu-rays of these newer 4k masters uh, now it's a bit unfortunate that they do these boxes this way because they sort of pick the films at random they're not in chronological order and i think we would all prefer actual cases for discs instead of these uh, slot designs which can unfortunately scratch and mar discs and it's hard to get them in and out and UHDs are much more finicky for keeping your disc surfaces clean so what might have worked for Blu-ray isn't as good for UHD so you do have to be careful with handling these sets in terms of getting the discs in and out but they are a great value and are frequently on sale so at least there's that as well and at least we finally do have the at least the uh, the more famous of the films on, on a new format with a new master. Now it, when you compare these UHDs for all of the films to the previous Blu-rays, you will see that there is a dramatic upgrade in the overall picture quality presentation than what we saw on those, which were definitely showing their age. And in spite of the Blu-rays being the result of a restoration project, that was not necessarily a perfect restoration project. It had some issues of its own, and the Blu-rays were not done in the style of the more modern Universal Home Video department, which really turned their game around from being one of the worst home video labels in terms of properly presenting films, because older Universal Blu-rays were almost always old HD masters with DNR and edge enhancement and sharpening and overprocessed audio and just kind of put out on a Blu-ray disc and you just had to hope it was at least halfway decent in presentation. And in the past few years, Universal has really turned their game around because they've been doing great 4K catalog scans and masters and doing lovely new UHD presentations as well in picture, not necessarily in audio, unfortunately. And that's something I'll get into with these, but that's also been a long-standing issue with the audio of the 
the classic horror films. But uh, essentially, all the films have a dramatic upgrade in picture quality because we have a new scan, we have a new 4K master as opposed to the previous work. And I don't know if they're using those previous scans, which I think were done in 4K back when they were doing these scans. But some of the films on those Blu-rays certainly did not turn out the way that they should have. Uh, particularly The Wolfman looked quite poor for some reason. And then uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon had its 3D messed with in terms of moving the stereo window and had a lot of misaligned shots in it unfortunately so there was definitely room for improvement even though on the whole the blu-rays were dramatically better than the video iterations we had seen in the past so at least we've now got newer restoration work that has resulted in these new catalog 4k overhauls for all the films so every single one of the films benefits dramatically in terms of the picture quality the level of detail and what the modern 4K scanner workflow is able to pull out of the surviving elements because uh, a, a lot of the films are not working from original negative and they're working from compromised sources with loads of damage from just the decades of being mishandled and reprinted over and over and over again because they were basically run to death. You've also got the initial films like Dracula and Frankenstein being early sound films and all of the problems and, and particular challenges unique to early sound films. So uh, that that in and of itself makes it more difficult and they're you know getting older now so you, you basically have to be as careful as possible and do as much research as possible and while i don't think that's unfortunately been done 100 percent the uh, transfer improvement on all of the films on these 4k masters is dramatic over the previous blu-rays and all you have to do is pop in the blu-ray for five seconds and compare the two Unfortunately, though, when you do that, it does highlight the major visual problem with these, and that's the HDR. Now, Universal does not go for Dolby Vision, so these are all HDR10. And while for the most part they are fine, unfortunately, they do have too much brightness in them in certain moments. So it seems for some reason that Dracula has this worst of all. But anytime there is a light source, especially in a dark environment, which of course these films are filled with dark environments, but anytime there's a light source, a flashlight, a lantern, a candle, a fireplace, um, and especially if there's silver or metal that's glinting, so say the, the ornate uh, dining table that Dracula has set up for Renfield at the start and in front of the fireplace, or when the Invisible Man sits down to have his meal as he's talking to Kemp about how uh, he must be careful when he eats because the food will be visible until it digests, and you see all the, the silver on the, on the table. Well, Anytime there's a bright object or a piece of metal that's having light reflecting off of it because of the HDR and how it's been handled here, it's unfortunately got that pop out effect. And that's really unfortunate and that should not have happened here. And it does mar the experience. And if you go back and look at the old Blu-rays, they of course don't have that problem. Of course, then you see that they're much older masters and, and have issues of their own and are really showing their age. So you can see the incredible visual upgrade of the new 4K Master for all the films, but you have to live with how the HDR10 handles the brightness levels, which unfortunately, it causes a pop-out effect anytime there's a light source or light reflecting off something, particularly metal. Unfortunately, this happens in all of the films, but thankfully the later films uh, don't suffer as much. So if you watch Creature from the Black Lagoon or the Technicolor Fan of the Opera remake or even The Wolfman, it's not as bad as, say, what you see in The Invisible Man, Frankenstein, Dracula, and The Mummy. Again, Dracula seems to have it most for some reason, I guess because it's the film that usually requires the most restoration effort and, and and I guess maybe they did it first. I don't know. But since we're talking about early 1930s films that were already in lesser condition in terms of the elements that survived, and they're all about dark environments and having the classic Gothic atmosphere derived from German Expressionism, you know, all, all of this stuff basically adds together. And so when you have too much brightness on certain parts of the frame, it, it really sticks out even if it's not a, a, a lot. It, it's nothing like what we see in one of the dreaded Sony Light Canon a, a HDR presentations where there's just too much light everywhere and you can you feel like you're getting blinded at times. But it's just enough 
that it does stand out and it does have the unfortunate pop-out effect. So unfortunately, the HDR is a big problem on, on these and it does mar the effectiveness and the just complete overhaul the films have gotten on these 4K masters. So that's the big issue visually in terms of these new presentations. The masters themselves are fine and you can see all the great work that went into these and how they really vault ahead of the previous uh, Blu-ray presentations. But the HDR is a problem and that, that should have been addressed. They shouldn't have been released this way. And quite frankly, they do need to be redone with a, a proper HDR presentation that does not actually cause light sources to pop out of the frame it, it, a, a good example is again in dracula anytime there's a lantern but also when uh we see the opera sequence when dracula comes in and and uh, right before we go to the box he's being led through by the usher who has her little flashlight well because of the hdr presentation her little flashlight is brighter than anything else in the scene far much brighter than what it should be for being a tiny little flashlight and that just sticks out like a sore thumb and it's like it's actually just projecting out of the image now which it's not supposed to do so that's that's a good example of what i'm talking about and the other uh, where it's just suddenly crazily bright is again in the invisible man when he's having his sort of midnight meal snack at kemp's house and because the camera's close and we have all of the silver on the table with all the light reflecting off of it. You just get that in full force and it's far too bright and all that silver just pops out of the screen and it's not helped by the fact that the Invisible Man is wrapped in entirely white bandages and they themselves have a little bit more of a of a light glow than they're supposed to. So again, it's not anything like what we see on a light canon HDR presentation, but it's magnified by these being much older films and being all about darkness and shadow and not having pristine elements to work from. You know, just any bit of this is going to stick out more. And unfortunately, this is a problem and it, it, it really does mar the earlier films. So that's that's my major red flag in terms of the visuals is that the HDR does unfortunately have pop out moments throughout. And I wanted to mention that about all of the films because I'll, I'll now go through each film and talk about the picture and sound a little bit per film because they do vary a little bit. But they basically follow in the same kind of pattern because Universal always does the main films together, usually per format, and then they'll do new masters and do them all at the same time so they share a lot of the same problems and issues so for dracula it is of course the first film and the one that usually gets the most attention paid to it in the restoration process because it's pretty much the one that's the worst off in terms of condition and it being an early sound film so there's all these particular things going on with this film more than even frankenstein that followed it so this does unfortunately have the most of the hdr pop out problems in terms of the nit usage being far too much thankfully these don't run continually through the entire film in terms of being constant every single scene but they definitely happen and especially in darkly lit scenes which of course dracula is filled with but there does seem to be more in terms of the intensity uh, throughout dracula than any of the other films in these 4k masters uh, in terms of the picture it is far improved over the old blu-ray which is really showing its age and had some definite compression issues and encoding problems uh, none of these films have been given that full meticulous we try to take every single original film element out of every single frame which is Honestly, I, I'm, I'm very pleased that they took this approach. So while you will see an occasional bit of frame movement or a little tiny bit of damage trying to poke in or a, a, a tiny speck or two, I would rather have that than the unfortunate practice that some people insist on of going in and trying to manipulate an image to where it no longer looks or resembles anything like film. Uh, but I was surprised that in all of these there were a significant number of tiny little specks or marks and things that that, that kept continually appearing. But again, no, nothing major, but I do expect to see a little bit of that because these are at least in some ways, trying to have an archivally minded presentation. And I think even more so than the older Blu-rays. And they were able to go in and address more of the damage they couldn't the last time around. So you'll notice that when there was heavier damage on the Blu-ray, if you look at that same scene on the UHD for any of the films, you'll notice that they were 
were able to handle that much more. Sometimes not entirely eradicate that damage, but at least dial it down and address it much more than they could have even back in 2010 to 2012 when those were made. So you can see the advances in film restoration in terms of the digital tools and, and techniques that we have now, even though we're only talking about a, about a 10-year gap between the old Blu-rays and then these new 4K masters. So again, outside of the HDR problem, these are substantial upgrades visually. Uh, I don't think any of them are uh, encoded as well as they could be. Universal is usually pretty decent with their UHDs that I've seen in terms of the overall bitrate and encoding, but they don't ever max out the bitrate, which is unfortunate. And also Dracula does share the disc with the longer Spanish version, but it also helps that these films are shorter in terms of their runtime and they're, they're not in widescreen. So that does help, but I would like to see these actually get a, you know, full 100% effort disc release and picture and sound at least one of these days. Cause they've, they've never quite gotten that. Uh, but these, uh, Four key masters themselves are just a ginormous improvement in the overall handling of the elements. So again, I have no issues whatsoever with the actual 4K master itself and the scan and how it was handled for any of the films. It is sort of the cutting corners and having a, a lower bit rate, but especially it's the HDR that for me is, is a problem. And I know I'm not alone in this because I know other people have spoken about this or, or noticed this, but it is very noticeable. And unfortunately, Dracula suffers the most of all. The audio is the original mono mix and lost this quality but like most of the universal horror films they've been subjected to all kinds of noise reduction over the years and different audio tracks used so it's it's very hard to nail down what's the best audio source of any of them and for most of them you have to go back to significantly older releases and for the best iterations of those you have to track down the absurdly hard to find Japanese laser discs from the early 90s which had digital PCM soundtrack versions of what we had here in the US as just analog audio on Laserdisc or the old VHS hi-fi tracks. But if you go back to older releases, you can usually find or cobble together a version from different versions of something that has more of the original noise floor and hiss intact. Dracula did it rather infamously get a brand new restored mono track for its Blu-ray release, which had significant de-hissing. And I've never been a fan of that track. The film has never felt the same to me without the natural noise floor that, that was there. It was very prominent and also kind of helped to make up for the fact the film has no musical score. So it, it's never felt right to me to not have that there. But at least it was an attempt at cleaning up the audio without... Uh, going overboard, but still, I wish there was you know a purest option for all of these films. So I, I've never been a big fan about how the audio has been handled on these, and unfortunately, these UHDs, like a lot of the recent catalog Universal UHDs have been doing, they either just recycle the Blu-ray audio track, or unfortunately, some of them, like some of their Hitchcock UHDs, actually take the Blu-ray audio track and add more noise reduction or EQ it differently or both and actually make it sound worse than the previous Blu-ray. So you have to go through all of the films and make a bunch of comparisons to try to figure stuff out. But basically with all of these, just like their Hitchcock titles, if there's not specific new audio work done, they're just going to be recycling the same audio as the Blu-ray or just manipulating it further and making it sound not as good as the blu-ray is so uh, all of the issues i've had with the films on in terms of the audio presentation on their blu-ray releases is still here on these uhds and some of them have been unfortunately magnified further so unfortunately the, none of these have a really good purist audio option and i've i've only been able to look at different releases of some of the films because again I just have two of the absurdly difficult to find Japanese laser discs, and uh, myself and others in the fan community have been going through and trying to figure out what's the best audio presentation of each film, and that's still an ongoing research project. So just keep in mind that all of the audio presentations on the UHDs are going to have some level of noise reduction and audio management, and all of them are either just recycling the Blu-ray audio or tweaking it further, unfortunately. So here on Dracula, 
while you still have the same sort of effect of the film being de-hissed and it no longer has that incredibly vibrant noise floor that we all remember from older copies. So outside of the HDR, my issue with these is, is primarily in the audio realm. Now, in terms of the supplements, we have all of the old supplements ported over. So everything from the iconic uh, early DVD extras, all the famous uh, David Scal produced commentaries and uh, video documentaries that first popped up on the 1999 DVDs. Uh, those are all here ported over again. Unfortunately, all the legacy materials have not been retransferred. So it's the same old files and Universal puts all these on the UHD. So they look really crummy, especially upscaled to 4K. So I really hope they they go and retransfer at least the the documentaries at some point because those are uh, those are among the greatest home video extras ever made and the commentaries are as well but um, I, I I would like to see at least the David Scal produced documentaries get a new transfer so they actually look better instead of the same old files copied over and over but at least they're here but Universal has a habit of never l making sure their their extras look good they frequently will port over trailers and extras that were made back in the Laserdisc era in the early to mid 90s and they'll even put that on a UHD and think it's fine and it's like I can tell you just use the same file. It's aliasing city, guys. What are you thinking? Uh, but at least all that stuff is on the UHD, so you actually have all the supplements on the disc. Uh, you've also got all of the extras made for things like the 2006 Legacy DVDs and things. So each of the film does have all previous supplements, but again, all of them are Legacy supplements. None of them have been retransferred. They do show all kinds of video noise and aliasing and, and so on and so forth, especially upscaled to 4k but i think we're all kind of used to that with universal discs unfortunately though there are no new extras so this basically just ports over everything that was on the blu-rays which were almost all entirely legacy extras so at least we have those here but it's just copied over to the uhd then we turn to look at the Spanish Dracula, which is included on the disc. So this is a disc that's housing two films. The Spanish Dracula is, of course, much longer and does survive overall in far better condition, except for one reel that was heavily degraded. So that's why the quality dips for a portion of the film quite significantly, uh, because uh, they had to use a very degraded source for that particular reel. The Spanish Dracula is noted for being much more visually striking and having more striking camera movement, which is has led a lot of people since its rediscovery in 1992 to really champion it as the better version. I don't think that it is. I think it has a lot of unique elements and it's fascinating to watch. It's amazing that it survived and we can see it in such quality as this now. So even this film is a significant upgrade over the previous Blu-ray presentation, but uh, it, it definitely doesn't have the same preservation hurdles as the original film. And it also didn't get cut down in the way the uh, main English language version did. So it has all of the scenes and pieces that were edited or removed out of the original version which is partly why it runs so much longer. So visually, this is a real treat seeing a new 4K restoration and master of the Spanish Dracula. So again, this is leaps and bounds better than the previous Blu-ray presentation. But again, because you've got two films sharing the same disc, I wish they had given the Spanish Dracula its own disc just to maximize bitrate because it is significantly longer and so it's never a good idea to have two whole feature films sharing the same disc but that's it doesn't really become a major thing but personally if it were me i much prefer having films on individual discs to maximize space but uh it, it it's just that's just my own feelings on the subject uh again though the hdr is a problem there are some unfortunate pop-out effects that happen every once in a while they're not as bad as the as the English film, which thankfully none of the other films are as bad in the HDR as the English language film, but uh, it's still an issue here. So again, the HDR is a problem, unfortunately, on all of the films in these two volumes. Like Dracula and all the other films, you will see some occasional fleeting bits of damage or things that they couldn't entirely eradicate. Um, it, it might be a bit more than you might expect, but if you look at the Blu-ray or you know the Blu-ray, you'll see very quickly that they have tried to address some of the uh, bigger damage elements, and they've done a better job this time around than the previous uh, attempt. 
Also, you have the uh, lesser sourced reel that, of course, is a big dip in quality, but it seems like they've tried to handle it uh, in, in a better way here as well. So it's, it's a bit, bit more seamless in terms of the transition from the uh, beautiful material into the damaged reel. So I think outside of the HDR brightness issue, this is really the best the film is ever going to look unless somehow they're able to source a, a better uh, element for that particular degraded real uh, so that's that's really the the one element that sticks out of, of of what survives is that they're having to use this really degraded section but at least it's still presentable and watchable and i think they've handled it about the best anybody could uh with the uh, the tools we have now in the 4k realm again the the real issue here is the, the HDR brightness levels do do cause some problems, but thankfully it's not as bad as Dracula. But again, Dracula is is the worst offender out of all of these films in terms of the HDR brightness levels. The audio seems like the the same base transfer as what was on the Blu-ray, and the audio has been part of the film's restoration for some time. Uh, also, there's a new copyright date on the film because Universal used the musical score to set a new copyright for the film back in 1992 when they first. Did a restoration and then released the film on VHS. So uh, that is tied to that sort of date, which is why you see a 1992 copyright date in the film. And that's that's why they, they focused on the audio specifically because they used that uh, that actual score to re-copyright the film. So the box and packaging and things doesn't really you know promote that it includes the Spanish Dracula all that much. So you might not even think about it or, or it might get glossed over, but it's been just as careful carefully uh, cleaned up in this new 4K master and is, a, is an equally big improvement over the previous Blu-ray as all the other films. So that was really nice to see the Spanish Dracula get the same treatment and attention. I just wish, again, that the, the HDR brightness was not a problem. Then we turn to Frankenstein, which is like Dracula and has a variety of preservation issues and element issues, including edits to the film for the, uh, for the post-code reissue version in 19- 1938, just like Dracula, but it had more significant ones, and of course had famous deletions from the original soundtrack, which took decades to be restored, along with those missing pieces of the original 1931 release version. So there's a whole lot to consider and discuss and to know about uh, putting Frankenstein back together and literally stitching the film back together instead of body parts. Uh, this basically follows what Universal did and their uh, restoration efforts that turned up on the Blu-ray, so like all of the films, these are basically 4K overhauls of the same workflow process that they did for what turned up on the Blu-rays, so it follows along the same lines. Frankenstein does have a number of missing frames, which do cause some jumps. Those are still here. I don't think, unfortunately, those are ever going to be located, but unfortunately, that's just a part of the film uh, that they're handled in exactly the same way. So you can see them literally following what they did on the Blu-ray almost as a reference. Uh, the overall transfer, though, is is a bit darker significantly than the old Blu-ray, which I think was probably brightened up a bit. I think there's been some degree of that with, with most of these films on their video releases in the past. So you'll notice that the transfer is uh, quite a bit darker overall. It's, of course, a gigantic upgrade over the previous Blu-ray in terms of how the visuals are handled. They were better able to handle some of the inherent damage and wear, although you will still see some various bits pop up here and there. They are much more minor now and can't be completely eradicated anyway, and I, again, would much rather see them have a more hands-off approach like this than what they, say, may have done in the past if it was old Video Universal still doing this, which thankfully... Uh, uh, they're, they're, they're nowhere near that, thank goodness, anymore. So overall, this is a dramatic visual upgrade in terms of the picture quality, the level of detail, the handling of the black levels, and Arthur Edison's photography, which is, uh, along with James Wells' direction, far more stylized and, and gothic in flavor and full of German expressionism elements than even what you see in Dracula. But unfortunately, that doesn't mean the HDR brightness issue it doesn't pop up. It does creep in here every once in a while. Thankfully, it's much more minor, but anytime we've got the any sort of bright light source, 
and especially when the villagers get out their torches towards the end you know there's there's a couple moments here and there where there there's definitely mo elements that are a bit too bright and they do pop out a little bit but thankfully it's much more on the minor side compared to what we see in dracula and it only pops up here and there but again it, it is an issue on all of these masters and it's it's the the one main issue with these 4k overhauls in terms of the picture quality is that the hdr brightness level is is too much in all of them but Thankfully, Frankenstein being a darker film anyway, it's less of an issue. The audio of Frankenstein is still debated in the fan community because it's been handled so many different ways with varying levels of noise reduction. And so uh, to get a better sounding version of the film, you basically have to cobble together a track from significantly older releases, but those also don't have the, uh, the missing dialogue, which was finally restored in 1999. But that track has tons of noise reduction, so you have to find a best acceptable source of the uh, restored pieces and of course you also have to remember that the original releases of the film were the cut down version so you have to remember about the reinserted scenes which of course have always been of significantly less quality because that's unfortunately all that survives and that's still uh, an issue that crops up in the 4k master although that handles it better than i've ever seen so uh, the audio on frankenstein on most releases and the blu-ray and here on the uhd as well it's still unfortunately over processed sounding there's noise reduction applied there's hiss reduction applied and things and I've never thought it sounded as good as it probably should. And now that I've been talking with fans and we, we've looked at significantly older versions of the film without any sort of, of cleanup attempts in terms of noise reduction as much, you know, you, you, you can find better sources out there, but you literally have to cobble it together and stitch different pieces of different tracks together to essentially Frankenstein your own better, uh, less manipulated audio track of Frankenstein. This is probably, of the Universal Horror titles, is probably the film where the audio is that messy in terms of trying to find a better source. This does seem like a version of the audio that was on the Blu-ray in terms of what's on the UHD audio. So it is what it is. It could be worse, but it doesn't ever really sound all that great. So yeah, I wish there was a purest option on these. I really do. I wish there was just a raw, plain transfer of Universal's best elements, and that would finally give us a proper archival option in audio for all of the films. But unfortunately studios and labels apparently think that that's uh, a no-no and they they don't they don't like things like that or they don't even consider it which i think is probably the more likely option but um i i would hope that someday these films could get better quality treatment in the audio realm in terms of the extras this has all of the old legacy supplements but again they're here on the uhd and it's the same old files over again that look really noisy they've not been retransferred at all so they at least they're all here though and when you do compare the the UHD of Frankenstein to the Blu-ray that's included. Of course, you can tell the dramatic difference in picture quality. You can see how the old Blu-ray is really looking not so good now in terms of the image processing and the disc encoding and everything, but also that it seems like it's been brightened up a bit. Uh, but you can also tell that the Blu-ray doesn't have any issues with uh, the brightness levels in terms of what the HDR presentation does on the UHD. So that's that's the one trade-off difference is, again, the HDR um, pop-out elements being an issue, even here in Frankenstein, where they're, where they're minimized. Then we turn to The Mummy, which has had a variety of preservation issues as well. It's always been filled with damage and issues in the previous releases, and obviously was reissued many, many, many times over the years. So it's needed just as much preservation work as all of these films have needed. And this UHD, just like the others, is a dramatic upgrade over the old blu-ray which is also really showing its age you know it has definite issues of its own in terms of encoding as well so this even handles the damage better it doesn't completely eradicate all of the damage but it handles it significantly better and i think here in the mummy it's even more visibly apparent how much new work has gone into this uh, 4k master because the mummy has always had 
consistent damage and issues throughout all of the transfers. So while you've still got the inherent source limitations and the things we're used to in terms of the the uh, the opening sequence being a bit softer, all the, the location and stock footage being of lesser quality, and then the uh, sections that are damaged or um, or are optical shots, as, as in the pool reflection scenes. There's still obviously a quality dip there, but here in this 4K Master, they're handled better than you've ever seen them before, and it is a dramatic improvement over the old Blu-ray. Again, do keep in mind you are going to see some of the source limitations and some of the inherent wear uh, pop up here and there, but again, it's nice to see that in, in just uh, you know small amounts of natural element inherent issues and source limitations rather than somebody going in and trying to eradicate any sense that this was ever a physical piece of film running through a camera. Uh, but again, unfortunately, the HDR is the one problem with the visuals because there are elements that are too bright and do have that pop-out effect. It does pop up primarily in uh, light sources and anytime there's reflections off of polished surfaces or especially metal surfaces. It also seems to pick up a lot of the, uh, the just the overall lighting in terms of uh, that anytime it's a brighter lit scene or there's a brighter light source, it seems to pick that up a little bit more. And so that does stand out a bit. Uh, I have been able to see Prince of the Mummy. It's one of the couple of universal films I've actually gotten to see uh, in a theater uh, off of various prints. So it's it's one of the films I have a bit more history with. It was one of the first ones that I saw and I've seen every just about every iteration of it that it, that exists. So um, I, I know a, a lot of its visual quirks and, and, and the source limitations. So it was it was a bit strange to to see certain elements sort of also having that pop out effect as well. Again, it's not catastrophically bad, and most people will probably not notice, but if you have a long history with this film and uh, HDR and catalog titles can bother you when, when the brightness is too much in certain areas, I think you'll definitely notice it, and especially if you've already watched Dracula, you're going to see it there, so that just sets you up for seeing it in all the other films, and so it unfortunately pops up here in the transfer of the mummy here and there and kind of rears its ugly head, but it's, again, not as bad as it could be, but but it's unfortunate that it's even an issue. It, it really shouldn't be in this uh, 4K master in terms of there, there should not be brightness issues with any of these films, but it's still early on in HDR. And I don't think every studio has quite gotten a, a handle on how to accurately use HDR on catalog titles. And more and more, unfortunately, we're running into problems where a catalog title has brightness issues that are not part of the original photography because of HDR being you know, a, a, a newer development in technology and being applied retroactively. It has to be done very carefully. And unfortunately, I don't think it was done carefully on these titles. I will say also, going back to the damage for a second that's inherent, you'll probably notice still here in The Mummy, there's a lot more consistent damage and uh, element wear and stuff than some of the other films. But The Mummy has always kind of been that way. So if you've never seen these films before and you're wondering, oh, well, why does this one have more scratches and lines that pop up and little bits of frame movement and stuff. It's always kind of been part of the source element that they've used for this film or the best that they have because it's part of all past releases, but this is the most sort of... Um this is the best attempt yet at sort of taming that stuff down or addressing it as much as you can without uh, degrading the actual image. So again, I think they've handled this about as best as they possibly could, but there are quite a number of, of scratches and lines that also do pop up, and it does seem overall to be more of those in The Mummy than any of the other films. If you pop on the old Blu-ray, you'll see that definitely they have done extensive work in trying to address that damage, and it's very commendable. Uh, you can also see that the old Blu-ray's really showing its age and also has encoding problems and and almost all of the old blu-rays you even see the dreaded moving grain frozen noise halo effect when people move around because those discs are very old now and they were not super well encoded to begin with and they had some degree of brightness boosting and you know they looked good then not perfect but they looked good then but you know especially now upscaled to 4k and 
stacking them up against the new 4K Master is not really a fair comparison. But it does show, uh, you know, that the Blu-rays don't have the HDR brightness issue. So again, you can compare with the old disc and those scenes where you really notice pop-out moments and you can see the old release, of course, does not have that issue. Now, in terms of the audio, we have the original mono mix. It's lossless here, but like all of the films, it's been subjected to varying degrees of noise reduction over the years, and all of these UHDs are either reusing the previous Blu-ray track or tweaking it further. And for The Mummy, I think the best you can do in terms of audio fidelity is the Japanese Laserdisc PCM, which is basically a PCM version of what we had here in the US on the old Encore Edition Laserdisc analog or the VHS Hi-Fi. So if you really love The Mummy and you want its best audio and the best quality we have, that's the most sort of untouched and not messed around with, you have to track down the Japanese reissue Laserdisc with the classic monster collection vhs artwork and trust me it took me a long time to find this so it's not easy to do but i think this has the best audio presentation of the film it's the most not messed with and that's why we really need a purist new audio transfer option for all of these films on modern releases to have a if they just want to call it the unrestored audio presentation that would be fine uh, because that would alleviate all of the issues if we just had a best available source transferred straight without any without any uh, manipulation of it maybe a little bit of of cleanup if there's you know a, a massive amount of crackle or uh, large pops and ticks and things in certain spots but outside of that you know nothing beyond the most basic archival level cleanup there should be a preservation audio copy so that's why i think having a purist audio option on releases is important but um this is just one case where I, I can identify what the actual best track is in terms of an untouched option or a relatively untouched option. And sadly, it means finding a Japanese import Laserdisc copy. Again, we do have all of the legacy extras included here. They are on the UHD. Again, they don't look so good because they've never been updated or retransferred. But we do also have some of the extras that were done at various points to tie in with the other Mummy franchise, the franchise that started with the 1999 film. So uh, that's always a bit weird to see included on a Mummy disc, and it's also all over the menu. And the menu, strangely, has weird instrumental music that I don't know where it came from. It has nothing to do with the film. It's not from the film, which of course has a limited amount of music anyway. So it's the disc you put in and you're, you're, you're kind of perplexed like, okay, all the extras on the side, we we're seeing clips of the, the modern mummy films. And then we have this strange music. So I, I don't know why they went with that instead of playing the, the main title Swan Lake or at least something uh, mummy specific for the 1932 film. So that's just an interesting quirk. I noticed that uh, th this is the one disc where the, the menu and the music seem to try to be as modern as possible and don't really have much to do with the original film. So that was just an interesting thing I noted. Moving on to The Invisible Man, it's a little bit different because The Invisible Man actually had its own painstaking restoration around the time of the Blu-ray that also had some discussion outside of the basic press release announcements for the Blu-ray set for the other films. It was at this time that The Invisible Man saw some of the original wires removed. So it's had wire removal since the original Blu-ray. Not that they were all terribly visible in the older versions but they did pop up and so there has been removal of those which is something that's rather commonplace in restorations today and they're not exactly things that would have been originally visible to most people on the original release prints but i just like to note it's had wire removal on both the blu-ray and now the uhd as well but the audio also had some of the original music restored there was a particular scene where kemp is listening to his radio that was a bit of source music that was replaced for copyright reasons on its original video releases and so for a good number of years you could only see the film with that slight tweak to the audio that's something that was common to universal video releases they uh, for various reasons didn't like to pay for new music licenses so a lot of films even including jaws for a good number of years were only available on home video in these home video rescored versions and slight elements or larger elements at times but here in the invisible man that meant that one particular scene did not have the original music which was finally restored on the blu-ray release and of course carries over here because this is basically just building off of the 
particular restoration work that went on with this film the first time around, just like the rest of these. It's following in the path of the Blu-ray version, but this one did have a significant amount of restoration work because they had to worry about all of the effects scenes, which were all painstakingly done in the original 1933 production. So like all of the films, this is a massive upgrade in visual terms over what was on the old Blu-ray, which in comparison is definitely showing its age, has the unfortunate motion grain halo effect and all, all that stuff. So it's, it's very much showing its age. But again, the issue here is in addition to the inherent element wear, which they have dealt with the damage even more than the previous Blu-ray. So you can see that has improved as well. You also have to deal with the HDR brightness being a factor. And also like Frankenstein, the transfer is significantly darker. But again, I think the previous Blu-rays had some degree of brightening and you do have the same cinematographer on both of these films, Arthur Edison. But here in The Invisible Man, that means that the black levels do also at times border on losing some detail and so you can have extreme brightness in certain areas but then also extreme darkness in others it does seem like a bit much in places thankfully it's not again all the way through just like all of these but when the bright moments come in they definitely unfortunately have that that pop out flavor the big one i noticed immediately is again when the invisible man sits down to have his his dinner and it's of course the white bandages the white tablecloth and then all of the silver and then the actual plates themselves because they're white and they pick up the light they practically gleam off of the screen which is not what you want and not what they originally shot so when the HDR issue comes in, it's it's definitely noticeable. So uh, again, the the issue with this is the the HDR has too much brightness in certain areas, which does cause the dreaded pop out effect. It's not terrible. It's not throughout everything. And thank goodness it doesn't pick up the white of the snow itself because then it'd be really horrible. But it's just unfortunate to see one of my favorite of all the Universal Horror canon, uh, just like all the rest of them, have to deal with this issue now that is not a part of the original film or has not been a part of any of the past releases. So again, unfortunately, the HDR is an issue in terms of the brightness in certain areas is far too too much. Uh, again, you do need to expect there is some inherent wear in the transfer, so you will see some scratches, lines, specs, and different things pop up. It is kind of surprising that they that there are so many throughout all of these, but again, we do have to consider that the elements themselves are, you know, they're nowhere near in the condition that they should be due to overuse and overprinting and just not being properly preserved for a long time. But also, you, you can tell if you compare to the Blu-rays just how much they have gone in and tried to address certain factors like that. So there has been new restoration work done, and you can tell the difference here in The Invisible Man, just like the others. But again, especially in the invisible sequences and the effect shots due to how those were constructed and performed by hand and with compositing, there are, of course, more uh, artifacts and things in those than the rest of the film because that's where most of those were in the original release anyway just due to how those shots were made but again it's just unfortunate that the hdr is an issue and also just like the rest of the films there's occasionally a shot or or a certain tiny segment that might seem a little bit softer so i think they are having to mix and match other elements in at times and of course the effects shots themselves are obviously always going to be of a slightly different quality just due to how those shots were made so since there are more of them in the Invisible Man than any other film. It's, of course, why this film has so many of those peppered throughout. I'll also say I noticed that it seemed like the actual grain structure itself in this transfer was maybe a little stagnant at times. I'm not exactly sure why this, this occurs sometimes. I, I, I see little bursts of that here and there, and it did seem to pop up in this transfer somewhat and did stick out enough for me to, to make a note of it in comparison to the other transfers. So again, I don't know if that's because this film had more restoration work back in 2012 or uh, because they, they, had, they wanted to pay more attention to all the effect shots in this 4K Master. I'm not exactly sure, but it just... 
it had some peculiarities, essentially, is, is what I'm saying. Uh, but this film has always had a little degree of that simply because there's so many opticals and, and effect shots in this film compared to the others. The audio is lossless mono, and it seems to be based on the same Blu-ray track. So again, that original music piece is restored to that one scene. But again, if you want a track that is more unmanipulated you usually have to go back to older video copies but do keep in mind you then have to deal with the replaced music section which of course means you have to take that section from the newer tracks the extras have all been ported over again and once again they're all the legacy extras they have been put on the uhd but they've not been updated or retransferred so they they look pretty crummy but at least they're all here now for the crown jewel of all of universal horror 1935's bride of frankenstein the the absolute masterpiece of james whale and gorgeously photographed by John Maskell with a unique visual identity in all of the Universal Horror canon. So I was really worried after seeing the other films up to this point how the HDR would play with Maskell's photography in this 4K master because he did shoot for, for what he termed a Rembrandt-type lighting and his photography in Bride has a great usage of silver and the grayscale in a unique way that is very different to what Arthur Edison was doing on the first film and Invisible Man, for example. So uh, Bride is very unique visually so I'm pleased that the 4k master is just as big an improvement over the blu-ray as the other films but unfortunately once again the HDR is a problem it does cause some elements to be brighter than they should be it does cause a few pop-out effects here and there it's thankfully one of the titles in these sets that is done a bit better but it's still too bright and with a film this meticulously crafted in its visuals that's not a good thing even when it's only a more minor or lesser problem it's still a major problem so while you are able to better soak in the visuals and look and see so much greater visual nuance in Meskel's photography than you could even on the old blu-ray you do have to keep in mind that there are elements that are now too bright and it plays with it a bit differently because again the way that Meskel is used Using the silver highlights and you know, how he's really playing in the grayscale. So each of these films does play differently with this HDR approach that's been given to them in these new masters and some fare better than others but again none of them are really 100% archivally where they should be and if you could view these with, say, a Dolby Vision grade that had zero additional nit usage, which is being used more and more common on catalog titles, I, I don't think I'd be talking about the HDR at all, really. So again, I do think the HDR10 presentation here is the real culprit in terms of how it's been handled by Universal. But again, the picture is a massive upgrade. They have worked on the damage inherent in the source elements. Again, it seems to be they're following the Blu-ray work because the film does have a couple jump frames and unfortunately the error that was in the blu-ray was replicated here of the missing frames of the creature going to the blind hermit's hut and as the creature goes past the tree branch there's a missing frame but there was a poor attempt at a fix on the blu-ray which causes a noticeable jump where suddenly he's advanced further and the branch is still moving it's just it's not done well and unfortunately they just replicated that here so i would have liked to have seen that redone properly or just left alone like it always had been done before so that was unfortunate to see but I kind of expected it to just be copied over um, but outside of that this is again a big upgrade over the previous blu-ray but again in spite of all the lovely new aspects of this master and the uh, better cleaning up of damage there is still damage throughout there are plenty of lines and specks and things and again it's it's so much that it, you you start to kind of wonder what the level of um uh, effort that was in this transfer was because they are consistently there they do pop up frequently it's less than what was in the blu-ray and of course there's some things that you can't address but a lot of other films get a more tlc it seems than than these did on these masters so that just seemed a little odd but uh, again uh, some of this stuff is inherent and some of this stuff you can't really do anything about except try to 
massage it a little bit more, which they have done, but you will notice that there is consistent damage throughout. So for Bride in particular, I noticed quite a number of lines and scratches that popped up throughout. And again, the HDR brightness factor does pick up, especially on light sources. So on lanterns, especially candle flames, there's even a point at which there's a little bit of light fluctuation and it seems like the HDR was actually picking up that, uh, which I have seen a few times in other 4K masters, which is really unfortunate, but it does happen sometimes. Um, but thankfully, all of these combined are much less than some of the HDR brightness issues and some of the other transfers. And again, Dracula seems to get the worst of it. So of all of these, Dracula is definitely the worst. And thankfully, Bride does fare better and it doesn't completely mar uh, Meskel's photography but again you would hope that they could get bride perfect in a transfer and unfortunately the HDR issues do rear their ugly head again and as with all the films in these sets it is a big issue. The audio is the lossless mono mix but again seems to be the blu-ray track rolled over and I personally would like to see a new transfer that is not messed around with because None of the versions of Bride I've tried have ever sounded all that good, even the old uh, analog versions and some of the uh, VHS tapes I've tried over the years. I haven't gotten all the different editions and I haven't found the Japanese Laserdisc copy yet, but I'll still try to and do a full comparison at some point. But as with all of these, you can tell that they've been through varying degrees of noise management and EQ and different things. And they definitely sound better if we could just get a plain flat transfer without any additional unnecessary processing in them. But at least what's here is pretty much replicating what was already on the Blu-ray track. Again, all of the old legacy extras are ported over. They are on the UHD, but they've not been retransferred. So they look pretty ropey upscaled from old files to 4K on a 4K television. If you compare the Bride UHD to the Bride Blu-ray, you can definitely tell that Blu-ray is very much showing its age just like all the others and you can see the issues that were prevalent in universal releases at the time poking in and of course you can see more damage because it did not have the tools we have today in order to address that damage more however it does not have the hdr brightness issues so you can actually make a direct comparison between the new 4k transfer with hdr and the sdr transfer on the old blu-ray so i think it's helpful being able to compare the two restoration processes and see how we've advanced so far in almost all areas but the audio track is still pretty much the same it does have the unfortunate tree branch error still that's been recreated but also the old version does not have the hdr brightness issue either so you know, you can now see more of the warts and all of the the issues of the Blu-ray more clearly, but also it does underline the fact that these new discs do have a brightness issue. Then we turn to the Wolfman, which is definitely, I'd say, probably the biggest upgrade out of all of these versus the old uh, Blu-rays, because the Blu-ray of the Wolfman was the poorest looking of the Blu-rays. For some reason, that master was uh, put out as something that resembled more of a unfortunate uh, old school universal style video master even seemed like it had some noise production it just didn't look all that good it had even had window boxed opening credits for some reason i mean it was just it was always weird why that one just didn't look so good and looked like a processed older master for some reason so here the wolfman has had the full 4k catalog treatment just like the others it has addressed some of the damage a bit more that was in the blu-ray master and is a night and day difference in terms of the picture quality just like the others the uptick in the actual picture quality overall is dramatic compared to the blu-rays for all of these but the Wolfman is the biggest example because it had the poorest looking original Blu-ray. Uh, the source elements do seem to, of course, be in at least somewhat better shape than the 1930s films. But of course, it also had to deal with being reissued and reprinted and run to death. So, of course, it did need major restoration work in its own right. But it now actually looks as good as the other films in terms of how it's been handled. So this is, I think, the biggest upgrade over the original Blu-ray set of releases because that Blu-ray, for some reason, just looked so 
poor compared to the others. There is still some inherent damage, so you'll see some light scratches and lines that pop up and maybe a speck or two that comes through, so it's not entirely free of, of blemishes, but they have been uh, minimized compared to what we saw on the Blu-ray, which of course has a lot more of that. But unfortunately, the HDR brightness issue is here as well. It pops up in certain areas, such as fireplaces, desk lamps. Um, in particular, if you picture Sir John Talbot's desk at, at Talbot Hall, there's a nice desk lamp that unfortunately is too bright. There's the fireplace that's too bright. Even the papers on his desk are too bright and sort of have that a little degree of that pop-out effect. It's not a major pop-out effect here in The Wolfman, but there are little pieces that definitely do have some of that. And then when you get to metallic objects, it's especially when they go to the gypsy camp and especially Maliva's bangles because they're metal and they pick up the light. They very much have that uh, pop-out effect, which is uh, too much and, and 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 so i think that's where you get it most is of course you always see these in bare light sources and so you've of course got it in all the the torches of the villagers and lanterns and any sort of light source like that but also you'll get it in some of the highlights unfortunately and any particularly metals or anything that reflects light or is a bright white itself like a stack of papers on the desk so unfortunately the hdr brightness is also an issue here it's not as bad as some of the others but it's definitely there and it does mar the viewing experience and i wish the more modern practice of having a, a hdr on a catalog title with zero additional knit usage would be uh, adopted uh, in the entire industry I, I hope it becomes a widespread thing because i think that is a much better way to go and that would have alleviated all of the issues i'm discussing with the hdr presentation the audio is the original lossless mono it it does seem to be based on the same track from the Blu-ray. So uh, if you've seen the Blu-ray, you pretty much know what to expect audio wise. And again, if you want something that is more untouched in the audio presentation, you do have to go back to much earlier video releases in the analog domain, which is pretty much the case for all of the Universal Horror films of, of the main group. You have to go back to previous editions and the really from the 1990s to get audio tracks that are less messed around with, and they are almost always working from the same elements. So if you go through and then go from Laserdisc and VHS to the through the various DVDs, then Blu-ray, you can basically hear the path of increasing noise reduction, and some are worse than others, so it just it just depends. But uh, I I do still get the sense that there has been some noise reduction applied here and there, and I wish there was a purist untouched option. But until I can look at further releases it's it's merely more educated guesswork but it does appear that this uhd basically reuses or repurposes the same materials for the audio that the blu-ray did all of the legacy extras are ported over from the original 1999 dvd and then the legacy series dvd as well so you get all of those legacy extras plus a little bit of material that was done to tie in with the uh, more recent wolfman film that universal tried and it didn't really uh, start off a new cycle of films as they had hoped. But you get all the legacy materials here. They're on the UHD, and again, they don't look so hot because they're just old files and they are not retransferred. If you compare the UHD to the old Blu-ray, you can tell immediately how the Blu-ray is not up to par. The image almost has a sort of milkier look to it. It does not have the same depth to the image it's been brightened up some you can see the unfortunate moving green halos and such you know it's, it's very much showing its age and of course has the window boxed opening credits and the noise reduction that's been applied so it's just it's definitely an old universal master and you can tell in two seconds the dramatic improvements that the 4k master brings but again this does give you an example of an hd master without the hdr brightness issues i think it's important to compare not only to see how far we've come in working with these same elements and addressing damage and better realizing the image quality but also I think it's good to to look for examining the issues with the HDR brightness. Then for the 1943 Technicolor remake of Phantom of the Opera, we have another brand new 4K master that is a dramatic upgrade over the previous Blu-ray, which 
was pretty good the first time you saw it, but the more times you saw it over the years, you could definitely tell it's still an older Universal Master. So this being a beautifully shot Technicolor film that won the Oscar for its color photography, you know, you definitely want this looking as good as it can. And so this is another dramatic improvement. This is a rather lovely looking 4K Master, and the color photography and the lushness of the visuals is one of the major strengths of the film, which is usually derided as, as not being particularly very engaging outside of the musical numbers and being very much a watered down version of the 1925 film which it, you know it's it's definitely softened you know it's it's definitely a, a a lesser version but it still has great strengths and is very important for universal at this time so being able to see it in a much improved 4k master is a real treat and the old Blu-ray is definitely showing its age now. This new 4K Master does much better realize the actual Technicolor spectrum, uh, particularly in skin tones and fine details. Color nuance is substantially improved. And so I think overall, this is another, I mean, all of these are dramatic visual upgrades. But again, you do have to worry about the HDR being a bit bright at times. But in this film, I think it's it's a bit tamed down by the fact that this is actually a color film. And I think they handled it a little bit differently in the overall brightness levels. So I didn't really notice as many or, uh, or, or far fewer of the sort of dreaded pop-out effects with certain brighter elements of the frame. And of course, there are many bright light sources in this film because they had to use bright lights anyway to light the scenes because real three-strip Technicolor required an intensive amount of light. And you can tell that difference in the actual photography. So I think this factor is what sort of negates the um, the HDR brightness being an issue as it is on the other films leading up to this. And of course, we're also talking about a 1943 film, so we are at least getting a bit more modern, and of course, this is also Technicolor. So in the visual realm, I think this is a substantial upgrade, though you do need to expect there are still a few blemishes, marks, specs, lines, scratches that pop up occasionally, though they are far less and minimized compared to what we saw on the old Blu-ray. So again, if you know the Blu-ray, you can tell that they have done some work to address that more. There's also a few short pieces where it seems like they're having to use lower quality material due to, I guess, damage or sourcing from another element. And also it being Technicolor, it is visual different in terms of the grain structure and the actual photography as compared to black and white. So you do have to keep those factors in mind as well. So I think this is a really handsome 4K master and a far better rendering of the film even than the old Blu-ray, which when you compare them definitely shows its age. For the audio, we have the original mono mix here in lossless quality. And again, it seems to be repurposing the materials used for the lossless Blu-ray track. It sounds fine, although there is a case some distortion in the high end on well especially in the musical numbers and all of the singing in the opera and with this film you have to be really careful with having good audio because you have the incredibly high notes being sung by Susanna Foster in the big operatic sequences so that's always a concern with this film's audio is being able to handle that properly so this is basically just repurposing what was on the blu-ray and again if you want something that's a bit more untouched you do have to go back to older versions of the film again all the legacy supplements are on the uhd disc but they do look pretty noisy and crummy because it's the same old standard F files copied over yet again and they were not retransferred for this release comparing to that old blu-ray shows the old blu-ray is very much uh, not not as good as we originally thought back when it came out. It very much shows some signs of degraining, and what seems like green in places is actually more of a lot of video noise in, in places. So it definitely needed a new 4K master that we received here on this UHD. It's still a solid 1080p presentation, but it's definitely an older Universal master, and none of those discs were well super well encoded. And you know, it's it's definitely showing its age as as a disc from that time for 
Universal. It's now pretty much rendered obsolete by the handling of the Technicolor visuals here on this 4K Master. Also, the Blu-ray does show more damage and a little bit more frame movement because obviously the 4K Master was uh, given the benefit of better tools and had a little bit more attention paid to those damage areas that they couldn't back when they were making the Blu-ray. Now to move on to the final film, it's of course 1954's Creature from the Black Lagoon, which of course is part of an entirely different era of Universal. It's a 1950s film. It's actually in widescreen. Uh, of course, it's still in black and white, but it has particular challenges that separate it and make it unique because it was also shot in 3D, which unfortunately is not part of the 4K UHD spec or realm. And so they basically just did the 2D version only as a new 4K master and presentation. Uh, while it's unfortunate we can't also view the 3D version in, in 4K as well, it was important to go and work on Creature as a new 4K master just like the other films because its Blu-ray was not super great was very much showing its age and creature on the blu-ray restoration had a number of problems in terms of the 3d version but this also sort of filters over into the 2d version as well the 3d version of creature on the blu-ray did have a number of frequently misaligned shots where the actual uh, camera images from the two different pieces for the left and right eye to give you the uh, stereoscopic 3d effect where they weren't fully aligned just right and so if there's any misalignment that caused causes some issue in the 3D effect and can also give you a headache. But also uh, Universal altered what's termed the stereo window. So they actually moved where the 3D effect hits and Creature was a film designed for feeling like you're underwater and you're seeing out into the depths instead of having things necessarily always popping at you. They did have some, but the idea was to be much more subtle about it. Well, this being made in the 3D craze of the, you know, 2010s or so, they unfortunately made the decision to alter that. So when you watch that Blu-ray in 3D, you will actually see everything is already distanced out from the TV. It's closer to you. And so it gives more of a pop out at the, at the viewer effect because they moved that stereo window of where the 3D effect starts. And so uh, they basically moved it closer to you, which unfortunately does kind of derail the original design and effect of the actual 3D photography. So unfortunately, those issues were never addressed, nor were the issues that Universal uh, caused on the Blu-ray of the film sequel, Revenge of the Creature, which also was 3D and was restored by the 3D Film Archive, but their restoration got screwed up by Universal, not once, but twice. And that disc has never been fixed, even though there was a recall program that gave you a still broken version of the film. So unfortunately, uh, the, the 3D versions of both films and even the 2D versions on Blu-ray are, are just still kind of screwed. And um, unfortunately, the 3D version of Creature, since we are still only able to see it on that same Blu-ray, which is ported here, and they've only restored the 2D version, unfortunately, the 3D problems with Creature do persist here, and that's that's a major issue. So I would hope that when they restored the 2D version that they also properly restored the 3D version. Uh, they just couldn't actually do a physical release of it because the UHD format does not allow for 3D titles, which is sad for all these great 3D restorations coming out that we can't see them at home. But uh, I would hope that they did actually properly restore the 3D version as well for at least theatrical DCP screenings uh, for, for the 3D version. But again, that's just that's a hope because it seems like they probably didn't, unfortunately, which is a shame because that means one of the iconic 3D films is still kind of screwed in the supposed restored 3D version. So in terms of the picture quality, this again is a major upgrade over the old Blu-ray, and we're only talking about the 2D version, of course, so there is no restoration or, or release or newer restoration of the 3D version, so it's just to the 2D version, so meaning one of the 
eyes of the 3D version, one of the pieces of film. Uh, but this is a really nice looking transfer. Again, it's a substantial upgrade in all areas over the old Blu-ray, which is really showing its age now, especially in comparison. And because it's a 1950s film, this obviously is going to look stronger overall than the 30s and 40s films due to it being a newer film. But again, you have to keep in mind that this film was rerun and reissued and run over and over and over due to sheer popularity and also for the, the 3D version as well. But it is just a really nice looking transfer. But again, that dreaded HDR <laughs> issue pops up. It's more minor here, I think, because it's just not picking up as many elements as it did in the older films. But it does unfortunately pick up some of the brighter elements in the transfer and kind of makes them feel a bit too bright. They don't necessarily have the same degree of pop out from the image effect, but you can definitely tell that there's some new brightness factors in there that we've not quite seen before. What might put off some viewers though is how this new 4K master highlights the fact that for some strange reason, this film was composed with a lot of really, really, really long sections of dupe material and it doesn't seem to be something that happened later on it seems to be something maybe part of the original production normally when you would have a scene transition you would actually have to use dupe material to have the fade or the transition effect and so you're used to maybe seeing that happen when you have a scene that ends and then we go to the softer almost at times almost out of focus looking footage for the transition effect or fading out and fading into a new scene and then once that transition is complete we then sort of have that pop or click back into footage coming from the original negative or or whatever source is being used and of course of much greater quality well sometimes uh, the for various reasons you find films where there are entire sections that are dupe material and are obviously of lesser quality. But here in Creature, it's after a certain point, the dupe sections are quite frequent and they're quite long and you're waiting for these to end and they don't and they go on for entire scenes and you're just wondering, okay, why is there so much dupe material here? So unfortunately, and this maybe goes back to just how the film was originally put together by Universal back in 1954, there's a lot of dupe sections. And so you're going to really see that magnified like never before in this master because it's been handled with more modern tools. You're able to get more visual nuance. Plus, you've got this HDR on top of everything in a 4K master. So it's really going to highlight how there are these really long, soft, smeary looking dupe sections of material that goes on for entire scenes at times. So, unfortunately, that seems to be baked into the original film. It's just never been this blatantly obvious and prevalent before. And I've seen some discussion of people kind of wondering why the, the creature UHD looks, quote unquote, so bad. And that's why. It's it's because there's all these super long dupe sections throughout. Um, again, it's, it's not the actual master. It's not anything Universal did. It seems to be inherent to the original source that there are unfortunately all these really long dupe sections. So do keep that in mind when watching this transfer. You're going to hit all these spots of all of these um, dupe sections of material where all of a sudden we go from lovely image to soft smeary almost slightly out of focus looking because it's dupe material and it's going on for entire shots for whatever reason it was just done that way it seems so uh unfortunately the the 4k master just highlights that particular element that is inherent to the film itself now to turn to the audio it is the original mono mix and lossless quality and seems to again be based off of the same audio sources that were used for the blu-ray so as with all of these these are either recycling the old blu-ray track or are 
modifying it a bit further. And if you want something that's a bit more untouched, you do have to go back quite a ways. So for Creature, that would probably be the primary Encore Laserdisc release or one of the earlier video versions from the mid 90s or before. Again, all the legacy extras are ported over, but again, they're the same old standard def files. And even though they're on the UHD, they do look pretty crummy watching them upscale to 4K on an OLED, especially. And uh, they really do need to be retransferred at some point. Again, comparing to the old Blu-ray definitely shows how that disc is very much not aging well. Uh, it does have even more damage, is pretty noisy and doesn't, doesn't look super great. It's definitely an old Universal HD master. And you can tell the new work that, that this film has really benefited from on the new 4K master and the better handling of the inherent damage and things and the greater visual nuance on display. But again, it does give you an example of the film without the HDR brightness being a, a, a factor and being a bit too much in the 4K master, which unfortunately is what you find on the UHD. So it's important to have these two versions to compare side by side to see the first go around with a, a restoration attempt on the films in a more modern realm and then something in the 4K realm. So that covers all of the films. And as you can see, the main issues are the longstanding uh, overzealous audio processing of the films by Universal which some films fare better than others, but over the years, they've just gotten more and more and more uh, in terms of the audio cleanup that's been applied. Some of it is good and helpful, but not all of it is. And generally, if you want the best sounding or the least messed with presentation of the audio, you do have to go back to the early to mid 1990s analog releases and look at those, which were usually doing more direct transfers and I can certainly say for some films that is definitely where the best audio is but on some films you do then have to worry such as Frankenstein about having to then find one of the more modern versions to source the restored pieces and then and try to cobble together your own Frankenstein audio track with less overall uh, noise reduction and manipulation of the audio so that's been a long-standing thing. I didn't think that would be something we'd see addressed on these UHDs, and we haven't, unfortunately, but again, I, I, I kind of expected that, so it's still something that uh, myself and other fans have been uh, looking into for uh, a good number of years now, trying to find better audio sources for the films, because... Unfortunately, studios don't think a purist audio option is 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 a good idea or 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 something they want to look into when really that should be on every release. But the big UHD issue in particular is the HDR application, which frequently on all of the films does go a bit too bright. And on certain films, it really has the unfortunate pop out effect. And of all of the films, Dracula fares the worst. It has the most amount of that pop out effect and generally the most amount of brightness. So uh, really, I'm not a fan of the HDR brightness application in any of these UHDs. I think it's too much in all of them and I wish it had been done more carefully and been handled better. It's by no means the worst I've seen on a catalog title, and it's by no means a full Sony light cannon, where did I put my sunglasses experience, but for it to be at all present in these iconic films, which are of course world famous for their visuals and their usage of light and darkness, it's really unfortunate, and it does mar these presentations, and it's quite frankly, very frustrating and annoying uh, because it shouldn't be here and it's not a problem these films have had before, so it's a new problem. So it could be a lot worse, but it's something that we do have to worry about catalog titles, specifically black and white catalog titles in the UHD realm. And unfortunately, there are times where we have cases like this where unfortunately there is too much brightness in certain areas in really iconic films. And for me, that's the big drawback of these releases. So 
the picture quality is dramatically improved on all of the films over the previous Blu-rays. It really wipes the floor with those, but you do have to deal with the HDR being an issue in terms of being too bright in certain areas, and on some films, really having pop-out moments where there should be none. So if it were me to, <laughs> to try and upgrade this release, what I would like to see at some point is a, a, a new HDR pass on these, preferably with Dolby Vision, uh, with zero additional nit usage to have a proper HDR presentation without the brightness issue that's in all of these. I would like to see them have a purist audio option that's a more archival audio presentation of the original audio mixes without the heavier handed noise reduction applications and other things that Universal has been doing to these films for decades now. Um, that really does need to happen. I would like to see the original classic legacy extras for all of these films at the very least get a new transfer so the actual files are better so they don't look as super crappy as they do on the it just ported over on these uhds um of course they're still standard def so they're never going to go beyond that but you know you don't have to copy the same file over and over and over again and it just looks increasingly crummy on each format uh but i would also like to see some new extras you know these are some of the most iconic films ever made and you know at least maybe a new critical commentary on one of the films or, or a new featurette, something, anything. I know every monster kid in the world would love to make extras for these films, but, you know, at least you'd think there'd be something. It's not like these are films people have never heard of, so it would it would be nice if we could occasionally get some, some new supplemental materials for truly iconic masterpieces of the cinema that everybody knows, but, you know. It's also hard to improve on what David Skull and, and company did back in 1999-2000 anyway, so there's there's that too, but still, you know, It'd be nice to get a little bit of new stuff every once in a while, Universal. Now I'll go over the packaging, which is also my other issue with these, which I mentioned at the start of this. So we've seen the films released in two volumes so far, just like the Universal Hitchcock sets, which they're now on their third volume. So again, it's a little bit annoying that we couldn't get all of them in one go or in chronological order. They've of course released them individually, but it's a much better bargain getting the boxes and they usually make you wait a while before the individual ones come out. So that's why most of us have the box set versions. So these are just like the other Universal box sets they've been doing. We have a nice new custom image, which is pretty good, I must admit. And then we have the slip box, cardboard, fold, book, page, whatever you call these things uh, inside with all the discs. I will say they have given a nice sort of printing effect to really get across the grayscale of the black and white image on these and then there's a reflective quality on the 4k banner so you know at least it's got some more premium feel to the printing so i do give universal that and the actual title is embossed on the front and the spine so the actual slip box is is nicer than most so you know at least it it, it feels a little bit more premium and then the rear has the iconic original poster images we all know and love from the uh, 1999 DVD run. And then there's also reflective quality on the back printing on the silver as well. So we have the actual book that slides out. And we have the same imagery with one of these universal books where we have more imagery on this very glossy paper. And these images, they, they might seem familiar to you. I'll, I'll let you percolate over that for a minute, and then I'll, I'll, I'll explain why they might be a little familiar. So we have a page for each film where we have the UHD on the left and then the Blu-ray on the right, and a nice listing of the supplements, but just a basic photo collage for each. Now, of course, you just slide the discs in and out, some are easier to do than others, but this is never good for discs because you're always going to scratch and scuff the surfaces. They're not properly protected as they would be in a regular case. And you it's very difficult to not get fingerprints and smudges and actually scratch the disc with your own fingers by getting them in and out. So this was never a good design in the days of Blu-ray, but those have scratch resistant coatings. UHDs don't, and they're much more susceptible to scratches causing 
playback problems. So if this was bad for Blu-rays, it's atrocious for UHDs. So please, guys, stop doing this. These have never been a good idea. And I really hate this style of packaging. It doesn't help anybody. It's not fancy. A simple case is far better. And honestly, I would prefer that in every instance. This is not a premium format. This is just plain crummy, and it's always been crummy. So all the films carry the same design. So here is Frankenstein with the UHD and the old Blu-ray. I do like on these, though, how they actually put the logos on the top of the page just to underline which side is the UHD and which side is the Blu-ray. And I, I don't know, that just strikes me as kind of funny in a way, but I, I do like that they did that. Here is The Invisible Man, and of course we are mixing and matching the film's chronological order in between the two volumes. And then here is the Wolfman. And then more of an image for each character. And again, these might seem rather familiar if you've had other versions of the film's more modern Blu-ray releases. And then the rear is a photo of the iconic 1930s Universal Globe logo. So here's volume two with the other films. And the same exact design with the you know pretty nice slip box and everything follows suit even with the reflective banners so here is the actual disc book if you want to call it that but the same overall design here's an image for each character once again and those also look familiar here is the mummies uhd and blu-ray page Get the same for the bride for the 1943 phantom and the creature makes his appearance and then these photos as well. And all of these should, again, look quite familiar. And the rear just has the same photo of the Universal Globe logo. Now, the reason why I said some of those images and the glossy paper they were printed on uh, should seem familiar to you. Uh, if you've owned certain varieties of the original Blu-ray releases, you might have owned the lovely UK uh, Blu-ray box set version. This was frequently far cheaper than the US versions. The discs were almost exactly the same. And of course, this was... Uh, the version most of us picked up, and it has the really nice box art that was better than the standard U.S. box. But it contains this digipack fold-out on very thick, glossy paper that's black and white, and you can start to see a lot of the same imagery that was copied over and just reused. Some of it, of course, is under the disc tray, but... It's the same overall effect. And as you can see, this has real disc hubs and the discs themselves are better protected and you're not going to scratch them up with your fingers and such. So this even has better packaging than the UHDs with their silly book design. But I just thought it was rather interesting and amusing to note that the uh, actual opening and closing pages of the new UHD book sets are reusing the same art panels as the Blu-ray set. So that's how it stands for the classic universal horrors in terms of the big name titles in the current and newest 4K UHD presentations. They are essentially brand new 4K master overhauls of the Blu-ray versions, so they contain a lot of the same quirks and pretty much the same audio tracks of the Blu-ray versions as well. The main issue besides audio and the not so good packaging is of course the HDR brightness issue, which is a new issue that is unique to the 4K presentations here. There's been no additional news about perhaps a third volume of more titles or what I think we all hope for is a upgrade to all of the Legacy Collection sets uh, where they basically broke down the films by character and included the various sequels and then did reissues of those Blu-rays and these Blu-ray Legacy Collections, which themselves were basically upgrading the idea of the DVD collections based on each character. So eventually all of these were collected in the classic monsters box set for blu-ray and this is what i think we all hope to see eventually get replicated on a uhd set but that would mean of course actually restoring all of the other films which are very underrated and not seen and discussed enough outside of horror fan circles and endless debates among monster kids so it would be fantastic if that does happen it does need to happen because this is you know just about the most iconic thing in universal's library but 
you know, it's it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. So it would be more likely that we would see a volume three, like their Hitchcock series of UHD sets, doing some of the bigger titles that have not been done yet. And hopefully that would be, you know, things like Son of Frankenstein, The Mummy's Hand, uh, probably Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, and hopefully Revenge of the Creature as well. So maybe they might finally fix the awful transfer problems of that Blu-ray that they screwed up twice and never fixed you can't you can't make this stuff up so those are my thoughts on the new uhds which i do think are essential upgrade titles in terms of the picture improvements but there are still some headaches and the hdr brightness issue is a real problem on all of them so do keep that in mind the picture improvements still are dramatic over the old blu-rays but unfortunately the audio is still stuck sounding about the same as those so it's an upgrade for the new picture masters. There are no new supplements, but you also have to deal with the HDR issues I've highlighted. So it's a good upgrade in a lot of areas, but it's also it, it, you have to deal with the HDR issue and the audio has not been messed with and there are no new supplements. So it's helpful in a lot of ways but also not helpful at all in others and now we have a new problem so it you know it, it's it's unfortunate that it couldn't be a home run and that they didn't pay attention to the audio and that we couldn't get more of the classic films but at least there's been some attention paid to the horror films and hopefully this means that eventually we might see a volume three with more of the classic horror films getting a a similar 4k master upgrade and universal has been quietly doing the other horror films uh in terms of new 2k masters and stuff and but they're usually licensing those out to kino and other labels but at least we are seeing more of the classic universal horror canon outside of what's typically termed in the monster realm actually see newer scans and releases but it doesn't seem like they're even considering doing a complete 4K overhaul for more of them, if not all of them. But hopefully we can start to see at least a few more getting a new 4K master, whether in another uh, third volume or as standalone releases, uh, just for preservation's sake. But in any case, this is still an important title to upgrade to. But do keep in mind the inherent drawbacks I've, I've highlighted. So as always, I hope my babblings about the wonders of the Universal Horror canon and their physical media releases has been at least somewhat fun and informative. If you yourself have tried and picked up the new UHD releases, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you thought the HDR was as problematic as I did in terms of brightness, for example, and uh, maybe how you feel about the handling of the audio tracks as well, or what you might like to see in a third volume, or perhaps hopefully a 4k upgrade of the entire classic monsters box set or maybe getting in more of the outlier universal horror titles in 4k as well so as always please do keep supporting both studio and boutique labels by buying films on disc to help keep both physical media and film culture alive and as always thank you ever so much for watching